Welcome back, I'm the Black Belt Barrister helping you to understand law. Here are 24 tips when dealing with TV license and TV license agents. And make sure you stick around to the very last one because that is the most important of all. Number one is that there is no obligation on you whatsoever to respond to any letters that come through the post, much less any obligation on you to write a letter in response or do anything at all in response. But tip number two, however, is that the online declaration has been known to work for lots of people. You can go online and you can declare that you do not need a TV license and they will possibly simply go away for a period of time before they come back and ask you to re-declare that you still do not require a TV license. Some people have reported that this doesn't work but I know many people for whom it has worked so that might be worth trying as well. But remember as well you don't necessarily need to give your name on these declarations you can just declare that the property does not need a license. Number three is no warrant no entry. If a TV licensing officer visits you and they don't have a warrant then they have no lawful authority to enter your property without permission whatsoever. In fact nobody has lawful authority to enter your property without permission unless they have a warrant to enter or to search the property or unless in some rare cases which is nothing really to do with TV license where a police officer suspects that they are going to find something that is linked to a serious crime and in those circumstances police have separate powers to enter your property but that is obviously not subject of this video. Tip number four is that whilst there is an implied right for anyone with genuine bona fide business to approach your front door and ring your doorbell or knock the door to speak to you this implied right of access stops at any locked gate so if at all possible and you can get a locked gate at the front of your premises then that is the extent of where they can come to again without your permission a locked gate forms the outer boundary to your property and no one is allowed to come through that gate if it is locked without your permission number five still on the implied right of access to walk up to your property like any other implied right this can be revoked. This can be revoked in a number of ways. It can either be revoked by way of a sign, it can be revoked verbally, telling someone to get off your property and go away. It can be revoked by writing a letter. Tip number six builds on tip number five, which is that this has been upheld in court, albeit in a drink drive case where police officers went up to the property and were asked to leave. And tip number seven builds on this further, is that they become a trespasser if they refuse to leave the property after the implied right of access has been revoked. Fused. Tip number eight builds on this even further is that anything that they find, discover, hear or talk to you about after they've been asked to leave and become a trespasser, anything may become inadmissible in court in any event because it was obtained whilst they were trespassing on your property. Tip number nine is if that they make any kind of physical or verbal threats to remain on your property or even to come into your house, this can become assault. And remember, assault doesn't necessarily need any kind of physical contact or harm. It can just merely be the threat of harm or the fear of harm by the person living at the property. This, I suspect, would be particularly prevalent with vulnerable or elderly people and there is an aggressive person trying to obtain entry to that property. Tip number 10 is that, in my view, there is a strong argument about someone wandering around your property looking through open windows and other ways to get into your property is unlawful because there is only really an implied right of access up to your front door. Tip number 11 is that when dealing with any of these cases, evidence is everything, and it is relatively easy these days to have a front door camera to monitor everything that's going on. And even if you don't have a front door camera, you take your phone out and you start recording. Tip number 12 is that you do not need any permission to film anybody that comes up to your front door. They should expect that they might be caught on camera because it is your own personal property and you can make a record of any conversation at your property without their permission. Tip number 13 is that if they refuse to leave and they continue to film you whilst you are at your property, in my view this could amount to a breach of your privacy because again you've asked them to leave. Tip number 14 is that quite simply you are entitled to close the door and not say anything to them. And tip number 15, if they really refuse to leave and are trying to force their way in, in my view you can use reasonable force to prevent them from entering your property because they have no lawful authority to do so. There is one caveat which I will come back to a bit later so please make sure you keep watching. Tip number 16 is that I do 
suggest that instead you would call the police and tell them that they are trying to enter your property without your permission. And the police really ought to do something about that. Tip number 17, providing that they don't have a search warrant, my suggestion might be that you don't say anything at all. Because if there is no search warrant and you do say something about your TV or TV usage, they might use this to try to obtain a search warrant, in which case they can come back to your property again, which I'll come back to a little bit later. Tip number 18 is even if you are cautioned, remember part of the caution is that you do not have to say anything. Although as the caution goes on, it may harm your defense if you do not mention when questioned something you later rely on in court. So again, I'm going to come back to a very important point at the end of the video. Tip number 19 is in any event, please do not get angry, do not shout, and simply remain calm. If any of what you say and how you say it does end up in court later, it's going to look much better on you if you are nice and calm and you are calmly telling this person to leave your property. From tip number 20 onwards, I'm starting to get a little bit more serious. Tip number 20 is beware the search warrant in anything that I've just said. Because if there is a search warrant issued by a magistrate, although you are entitled to have a look at it and read it to check that it is valid and genuine, then they do have the authority to enter and search your property. And that leads me on to tip number 21, which is that within the legislation, you have a duty to provide reasonable assistance in them taking a look at your television equipment. Tip number 22 is that if you have been fined for not having a TV license and you fail to pay it and any challenge has been unsuccessful, then failure to pay the fine is a more serious offence than having the fine in the first place. Having said that, tip number 23 is that the burden is always on the prosecution to prove any offence against you. But whilst it might seem unfair, it is sensible for you to raise sufficient evidence to disprove this offence on your own behalf. And finally, tip number 24, the most important tip of all, is if you are unsure, please take formal advice. I understand that one hour with a lawyer is likely to be more than the price of the TV license itself, but if you are unsure as to your particular circumstances and whether you need a TV license for the way that you watch any programs on your machines, then paying the TV license year on year may be much more expensive than that one hour with a lawyer to establish whether or not you really do need to pay for a license. And as always, everything that I say in these videos cannot be taken as formal legal advice because your circumstances might be very different to someone else. These are, of course, just general tips and guidance as to the standard position across the board. If you want to learn more about when you do and do not need a TV license, why don't you check this video here.